is going on YouTube? East Tactics here. I've had a couple of people ask me how exactly did I install this hobby wing fan onto my motor securely because many people have gone the route of ordering this specific heat sink and fan only to find whether they knew it or not before they ordered that it's actually too large for the motor uh, it's loose and it just doesn't fit and there's a couple of different videos on YouTube that I've seen where people have tried to use like different methods for securing it and I kind of did my own unique thing and I'm not even going to say that what I did was the easiest way, but what I did do has worked really well. Um, one method I've seen people do is simply um, find some like heat sink or like heat resistant tape to like wrap around their motor to make it slightly larger. That and then they put the then they popped the motor over that and it had a level of secureness because of that. Um, and that probably could work fairly well, although I can't really think of any product that could withstand that type of heat, but I'm sure there's a number of stuff, a number of different things. Anyway, that's one method. Another person I noticed, um, they actually wrapped um, a like metal um, strapping around the inside of the motor in two different spots, both like around right here and around right here on the inside which created that thicker section for the for the um, heat sink to latch onto and because it's metal it's fine because it can just draw the heat that way so those are two those are two ways of doing it that might even be easier um, than what I've done so anyway just to kind of give you the whole 411 on what I did do to make mine work was as follows. I, if you look closely, you can actually see behind the, the motor leads, there's a, there's a shiny metal piece here and a shiny metal piece here. And right there is the ends of a um, hose clamp. So, I went to um, a local hardware store and I picked up two hose clamps like this. I tried to find a hose clamp that had the smallest screw section possible. In fact, I wish I would have found a hose clamps that had an even smaller profile screw than this, if they exist. but. Needless to say, that's the smallest I could find, and that's what I went with. So what I ended up doing was I ended up cutting the hose clamp like this. And opened it up, and I only actually needed a small section of the hose clamp, like literally where my fingernail is, about that far, and then same thing, about that far to bridge that gap on the underside, and I did this twice. I put this, and in, in fact, I put it this way, with the bolt facing down, and the key to getting this section in the right spot was if you notice right here there's this little flap you actually want the the metal of the of the heat sink itself to snug down into that as deep as you possibly can so again the metal of the blue heat sink itself push down far as far as possible so this is inserted up and then I had to do a little bit of a, a tiny self tap through this because it was a pain in the butt to to try to 
push the nail that I used, the nails that I used through that. So I took a small drill bit and I put a, a hole right there in the top of where my thumbnail is. I put a slightly bigger hole right there and I did the same thing on this side. So then what I did originally was, now if you look in there, you may not, you may be able to see, let's see. Right there is the tip of the nail. And then right there is the tip of the nail. So I couldn't use a, I, I first tried using a thumbtack. Um, four thumbtacks, one there, one there, and then on the other side, one there, one there. Because the, the thumbtack had a, has a small enough profile on the inside that it didn't really get in the way. However, the thumbtack method didn't work because thumbtack, the metal for the thumbtack was too small. And so I started to cinch down on it and it just broke the metal on the thumbtack. So you can't use a thumbtack. You need to use something of a higher grade metal. And right now I'm checking my We'll box the screws to see if I can find um, something of similar caliber that I used. Because you want to use a small nail that's like pretty sturdy as far as its thickness, but not like insane thick. Because you want to be able to bend it. Here we go. So. There's the thickness, and let me just find a thumbtack so you can see that comparison. So originally, I tried using a thumbtack, which didn't work. And then you see the thickness of this, it's thicker, obviously it's longer, so if you can find something this thick that is shorter, because it's gonna push up through the motor from the inside, and you know, then you're just gonna bend it, so you're gonna end up you know, you only really need something about about that long or, you know, maybe about that long because once it's up through, then you just bend it upward and you do that to secure the four edge, the four, you know, ends of the hose clamp. And again, it's very important that you get the hose clamp positioned in a way to where To where the blue seats as far down in there as possible. Now, with that done, there's some modifications that had to be done to the actual um, heat sink itself. You'll notice right here that I had to notch out a, a section because I wanted my heat sink to cant inward. I didn't really like the idea of it canting outward. The reason why I had to notch this section out is because I needed to push the um, motor or the heat sink as far this way as possible because if you look here my bar doesn't go all the way through I even had to move the fan itself it was positioned more center I had to move the fan unscrew these four screws and push the fan as far this way as possible so that um, so that I could basically get this rod through and then instead of it going all the way through it actually I put the banana clip right there instead so there's a lot of little things you have to do to make this work anyway The way that you not the, the way that you notch this out, at least the way I notched it out, was I took the a pair of these cutters and let's say 
you know, this, this paper pad is the, um, is the heat sink. So I was able to put a cut into it about that far, you know, respectively, if you're like thinking of this whole piece of paper as this. I was able to put a notch in it and then once I got that notch in there, I was able to grab my pliers, cinch down here on it and just bend. And I just kept bending back and forth, back and forth. And then it ended up getting this whole notch out. So that's how I did it. Um, you might, you know, I mean, if you take if you take a Dremel or something to this, you're going to be shooting sparks everywhere and stuff like that. So that's why I didn't take a Dremel to it. Um, so I had to do that. And then last but not least, on the back corner, back in here, since it's canted inward, this, so if I were to basically be describing this corner of the heat sink right here, but on the inside down in here, back in there, I had to actually rip this little corner off too. So, so yeah, I had to kind of rip off sections of it but so the best way to maybe describe that would be um you know if you've got your metal you've got your metal here right i had to take and basically rip off this section back in here um basically because the out drive down below this out drive, love my artwork, right? Was spinning too close to it. And so I had to basically notch a corner of it off. And I did that the same way. I ended up just, just kind of yoinking on it with, uh, with those snip, those snips and just bending it to where I got a chunk of it off. So that's how I did it. I mean, that's how I installed this. And what, what's nice though, is once you get, once you get the, um, you know, the four holes drilled into the heat sink. And then, like I said, I, it was easier for me to pre-drill little holes, you know, a little teeny hole to pre-drill it with a drill right there because otherwise you just end up trying to, you know, force feed it through that, that little wedge there and it's just difficult. So yeah, pre-drilling little holes there made it easier. Um, anyway, so then once you start tightening down these screws, once you've got both of the hose clamps on, it just sucks the, the heat sink right over the motor, it tightens it up real tight and you're good to go. So. I know there's one last thing I, I do want to mention. This, this whole plastic piece, I did end up having to notch a small notch out of it. So I guess the best way to describe what, what I'm trying to say there is So that side rail piece, you know, it looks something like this. And then it's got like, this, this, this is the, the part that goes that way. And you've got screws that go, you know, into it from underneath to screw it in. Well, where the two clamps are, this, screw in this knobby section i had to actually take and notch out a small piece on the on this flap so um you know this flap right here looked like this I took a chunk out right there so that this screw fit because it was too tight so you know a little tiny notch had to be cut out of it to make it to make it work so basically that is the 
the way that I installed this bad boy. And I mean, it's worked really well for me, but maybe, you know, just finding some, some special heat rated tape to wrap around the motor is easier. Um, or the other, the, the metal strapping idea, you know, your call, but Most people that I've seen do it that way still had, they had the heat sink um, canted outward instead of, so they had it canting this way, which is fine, you know, you can still do that. Um, and then you're less likely to need to, you know, mess around with notching a section in the back corner off or whatever. but. Mine's canting inward. And that's how I did it. Um, having the instructions on how to do it, maybe it'll be pretty easy for you guys to duplicate it because I was just kind of having to figure it out as I went. But now that you've got kind of the step-by-step -step on it, maybe, you know, you pull it off easy. If you do pull it off, I'd like to, to know. Let me know in the comments of, of this video that you did it and it worked well for you or didn't. I mean, these heat sinks are like 12 bucks or something like that. So if you end up, you know, screwing up on it, then you're out 12 bucks, whatever. Anyway, guys, so that wraps up this video on how I installed my heat sink on my vehicle. And I will let you go until next time. East Tactics, out.